Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter, and some of the discoveries from its moons as well. Although in this case this is actually a really intriguing perspective, because in reality this was just a moon in front of Jupiter, and as you can see here, we even get several shadows on the surface of Jupiter from the eclipse of several different moons. Now, in the last few years, as you probably already know, NASA has been conducting a very thorough investigation of Jupiter using its Juno mission. The spacecraft containing several instruments and the spacecraft using solar panels, even though the amount of light received here is much, much lower than what we get on planet Earth. Because of the distances, it only gets approximately 4% of sunlight, and so the solar panels here are actually extremely inefficient. But because they're so large, as a matter of fact, some of the largest solar panels produced on any spacecraft, they definitely work. But more recently, because it's actually already finished its primary mission, Juno has also started to observe the moons of Jupiter, looking at each of them individually and trying to find out as much as it can about these unusual objects. Jupiter obviously has quite a lot of moons, but it's really its four main moons, the Galilean moons, that are particularly interesting to scientists. They basically represent most of the mass of all of the moons located here, with Ganymede being the largest, Callisto being the second largest, Io being the third, and Europa being the last. Each of them extremely different from one another, and containing their own mysteries as well. And we've discussed some of these discoveries and some of these mysteries in previous videos you can find in the description. But today we're going to be focusing on a few more. Starting with Ganymede, the biggest moon of Jupiter. And as you can see from this illustration, one of the major mysteries of Ganymede is really in regards to its own magnetic field. It's the only moon we have in the solar system that has a pretty strong magnetic field, producing its own unusual effects and interacting with Jupiter as well. Now, a few years ago, when the NASA scientists were studying the magnetosphere of planet Earth, using the mission you see right here, known as the MSS, Magnetospheric Multiscale Spacecraft, they were able to observe magnetic reconnection or basically an event involving magnetic lines of planet Earth that then interacts with various charged particles coming from the Sun. And in this case, when the magnetic reconnection does happen, it essentially often converts a lot of magnetic energy into heat and kinetic energy. And this is actually a pretty explosive physical process that converts a huge amount of magnetic energy pretty much all at once. And here on Earth, it often results in very powerful emissions, which we then see as various aurora on the surface. But that's of course on planet Earth. Ganymede, because it's so far away from the Sun, doesn't get as many effects from the Sun itself, but it does get effects from Jupiter, which actually creates very similar formations. As a matter of fact, because we have these two objects, Jupiter and Ganymede, both possessing magnetospheres and both interacting, there are quite a lot of other unusual effects that all of this produces. For example, Ganymede also tends to produce this unusual formation, creating various types of disturbances inside the magnetosphere of Jupiter itself, which then manifests itself as various dots inside the aurora visible on Jupiter, with the Ganymede footprints being particularly visible. You can actually see them right there. But the magnetic reconnection events very likely produce much more powerful emissions, and thus even more powerful aurora that then appear on Ganymede, and to some extent Jupiter as well. But as we've also discovered by studying Jupiter and its moons, it's not just Ganymede that has aurora. The aurora here are much easier visible and are much bigger, but in reality, all four moons seem to produce them because of various interactions with Jupiter, although in some cases because of unexplained phenomena. For example, here we can also see a spot from Io, which seems to be produced in a very different way. It's most likely not really because of the magnetosphere, but it seems to be because of very powerful emissions from the surface because of the tremendous number of volcanoes. There are 150 known volcanoes and possibly about 400 in total, and they all tend to emit a lot of particles, which then get trapped by Jupiter's magnetosphere, which then creates a kind of a ring shape that directly bombards the upper atmosphere of Jupiter as all of these particles follow the magnetic lines. And in this case, Juno has already conducted over 30 orbits around Io, observing how all of this changes over time, and has actually recently discovered that for some reason, Io has officially become even more volcanically active than ever before. And so it seems to have entered some kind of a more active volcanic season, dramatically increasing the amount of stuff it releases, and also becoming slightly brighter overall. Here is one of the more recent pictures, revealing the heat map on the surface of this moon. And because Io is also responsible for creating the ultraviolet aurora on Jupiter, 
This is also reflected in the aurora emissions visible on the surface of Jupiter as well. And these are actually permanent aurora, they never disappear, and they're essentially produced by these emissions coming from Io, but have now become just a little bit brighter. But this could be explained to some extent because of the nature of Io and because of its interaction with other moons and Jupiter itself. The reason it's so volcanically active is really because of the way that it orbits around Jupiter and because of the tidal interactions with the planet and its partners. Its orbit is slightly more eccentric than other moons, or basically it's slightly more oval, which does end up producing tidal effects on the surface. Or essentially it gets stretched and pulled on by the extreme gravity from Jupiter itself. But at the same time it has three partners, with each partner pulling differently as well. And because of this pulling and twisting, it basically gets really really hot inside, with all of this heat escaping as volcanoes. But once in a while, the moons will arrange themselves in just the right way, and Io will actually receive much higher tidal effects compared to some of the other times. And this can, in theory, dramatically increase volcanism over time. At least that's one of the main explanations for what's probably happening. At the moment this is just an observation and nobody really knows the true reasons. But I'm sure we'll have more information, possibly sometime in the next few months. But we also got some new updates from Jupiter itself, with the updates coming from the upper atmosphere of Jupiter itself. Here we're looking at upper troposphere, the layer that produces most of the weather visible on the planet itself. So all of the clouds and all of the visible formations, they're all formed inside the troposphere. And there's even a spot here where the conditions, in terms of pressure and temperature, are actually not that different from planet Earth. But they do change quite dramatically as you go deeper or as you go higher. And here the lighter bands usually represent colder temperatures, and darker brown or red bands, also known as belts, represent slightly warmer temperatures. And so extremely recently the scientists, whose paper you can find in the description, were actually trying to study the patterns here and trying to figure out how all this is formed. But in the process discovered that for some reason here the temperature sometimes rises and falls without any connection to any season for reasons still unknown. And this is kind of strange because generally we don't think Jupiter has any seasons. For example on our own planet the seasons are basically caused because of the axial tilt, the tilt is about 27 degrees, but on Jupiter that tilt is only less than 3 degrees. So it generally gets the same amount of heat from the Sun, no matter what part of the orbit it's in. Yet there seems to be some kind of a seasonal variation independent of the axial tilt. Or basically it seems to contain some kind of a season that's completely unexplained. But more surprisingly, they also discovered some unusual connection between various weather patterns. For some unknown reason, when they see some kind of a shift in weather in one part of the planet, there seems to be the opposite effect on the other side of the planet, but in the opposite direction. So for example, they might observe temperature going up in the northern hemisphere, at a very specific latitude inside a very specific band, which then results in the opposite change in the belt of the same latitude on the opposite side of the planet. As if it was some kind of a mirror image, or if it was basically having some kind of an opposite effect on the other side. Currently this has no explanation whatsoever. It basically suggests that there's some kind of a very large connection between various belts on Jupiter located thousands of kilometers away from one another. Now in this case the scientists believe it might actually be caused by some interaction in the upper stratosphere, which kind of maybe transfers some of the heat or maybe some of the energy across the planet, but in reality it's just a new discovery and nobody really knows what's going on. So quite a few intriguing discoveries from Jupiter and its moons. But there are definitely going to be more in the next few months because Juno is far from finishing its mission and is going to be releasing even more data in the coming months. And so until those new discoveries, check out some of the previous discoveries from last year in the description below. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.